When we're looking at value add properties or any property out there, it's easy to overestimate because there are literally hundreds of variables going in to every single financial model that we put together. There's two that any investor really should be focusing on when they're looking at models. Number one is rent growth. How much are you growing rent over the hold period? What is the market rent? And then what is the market to market opportunity? And whenever we're buying a property that has underperforming rents, there's a model, we have assumptions, we test it, we go out and buy the property, and you don't spend all the capital on day one. The way you mitigate risk is that you test it unit by unit, and you make sure that you're getting the return on investment you thought you would. And then you have to go and look at the data and make sure that if you're getting the rents you want, then you continue to go. If you're not, then you have to rethink your business plan and make sure that you retool it in a way that makes sense so that you are getting the return on investment. The other thing that we look at is cap rates. And cap rates, whenever you're looking at a financial model, if you move them just a little bit one way or the other, they can really impact the end result of the model. What we do, and really what is best practices when it comes to financial modeling, is that each and every year we own the asset, we raise our assumptions on the exit cap rates by 10 to 15 basis points per year. And what that does is if we look at current cap rates today, which let's just say are 6%, by the time we exit the asset in five years, we might be exiting at a 6.6 .6 cap rate. And that expansion allows for the fact that there's unknowns in the capital markets. Uh, we don't know where the interest rates are going. We have a property that's five years older and it accounts for all those unknowns. It's not perfect. You often get, especially in the last 10 years, where we've, been, where we've had cap rate expansion in our models, we've actually had cap rate compression. And cap rate, there's an inverse function to it. Lower cap rates lead to higher prices.